morning to everyone. Welcome this morning to our morning prayers. Our entrance hymn, Wake Up My People, we should be led by the choir. Oh, number 316 in your number. Number 316. <coughs> Wake up, my people, wake up to the shout. Wake up, my people, to what life's about. And wake up to the king of all the ones who suffer sorrow. Wake up, promise now to do the best to change tomorrow. Wake up, my people, and open every door. Wake up, it's time now, love my people evermore. All across the nation, people are waiting. People are lonely, waiting hopefully. Wake up to my people, listen to their story. As often as you do these things, you do the same all day. Wake up, my Wake up, give a shout. Yay! Wake up, my people. Know what life's about. And wake up to the needs of all the ones who suffer sorrow. Wake up, promise now to do the best to change tomorrow. Wake up, my people. And open every door. Wake up, my people. Love my people evermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So, good morning, my sisters and brothers. Good morning. And welcome to this our celebration in commemoration of the 32nd Sunday of Ordinary Time, Year E. And as we gather as church, as we gather as community, let us call, recall those times now in which we have fallen short, those times in which we have sinned. And as we recall those times now, let us ask our Heavenly Father for pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Oh! 
glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Lord, and Son, Lord, Lord, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, the Father, Amen. In the highest and on earth is to people of goodwill. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the book of wisdom wisdom is bright and does not grow dim by those who love her she is readily seen and found by those who look for her quick to anticipate those who desire her she makes herself known to them watch for her early and you will have no trouble you will find her sitting at your gates even to think about her is understanding fully grown. Be on the alert, for her and anxiety will quickly leave you. She herself walks about looking for those who are worthy of her and graciously shows herself to them as they go, in every thought of theirs coming to meet them. The word of the Lord. For you my soul is thirsting, 
My body pines for you Like a dry, very land without water For you my soul is thirsting For you I long, my God So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory for your love is better than life my lips will speak your praise for you my soul is thirsting for you i long my god so i will bless you all my life in your name i will lift up my hands my soul shall be filled as with the banquet my mouth shall praise you with joy for you my soul is the On my bed I remember you, on you I muse through the night, for you have been my help, in the shadow of your wings I rejoice, for you my soul is the reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them. Like the other people who have no hope, we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, and that it is the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who have left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call the commands of the Lord himself, and he'll come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will rise, will be first to rise. And then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So, so we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thought as these, we should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Stay awake and stand ready, because you do not know the hour when the Son of Man is coming. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus told this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, five of them were sensible. The foolish ones did take their lamps, but they brought no oil, whereas the sensible ones took flasks of oil as well as their lamps. The bridegroom was late, and they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight there was a cry, The bridegroom is here, go out and meet him. At this all the bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps, the and the foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. But they replied, There may not be enough for us and for you. You had better go to those who sell it and buy some yourselves. They had gone off to buy it when the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding hall and the door was closed. The other bridesmaids arrived later. Lord, Lord, they said, Open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you solemnly, I do not know you. Stay awake, because you do not know either the day or the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Spirit of God in the clear morning water, going to witness the trees on the hill. Spirit of God in the finger of morning, till the earth, bring it to birth and blow. the breath of the Spirit blowing in me. So good morning again, my sisters and brothers. Good morning. Are you good? So welcome to this, this is the second Sunday of Ordinary Time, Year E. In our Gospel and readings today, and if you have a Catholic news with you, you would see essentially that this weekend is a lot about one particular word, and that word is vocation. Vocation. In the Catholic news, of course, you'd see that the, the vocation of which they speak has a lot to do of, with the vocations to the priesthood. But vocation, of course, can be looked at in a much broader sense. And perhaps for us to be able to then take a look at vocations we should understand the word vocation. If you look at the root of the word vocation, it has a Latin root, and it comes from the Latin word vocare. Vocare. And then all of you, of course, who would have studied French or Spanish, recognize the word voix, or vox which comes, which means voice. But vocare has an interesting sense. Because when we think about vocation, invariably, we think about God calling you. 
So he gave your cell phone number and he gave you a call. But vocari in itself goes a little bit deeper. In fact, in fact much deeper. Vocari means to be called from somewhere and to be called to somewhere. So that essentially then it has two aspects of it. It's not simply giving you a call. It's not simply saying, hey, what's going on? It's not simply to say that I have something I want you to do. It is a voice, it is a call from somewhere to somewhere. It is something which then calls you from where you are and invites you to go to somewhere else. It's a doing word. That particular sense of vocari then, then changes what we look at when we look at these readings, for instance. This gospel today actually is a lot about vocation. But if vocation is sort of like in between and you can miss it if you read the gospel too quickly. There is a sentence in there that speaks to vocare. So we all know the gospel. We have ten bridesmaids. Five of them are described as wise or sensible and five of them are described as foolish. And they're all waiting for the bridegroom to arrive. Now in the Jewish set up, when we speak about a wedding, the bridegroom apparently used to play a game with people so that no one knew exactly when he was coming. So he used to take a beeline to the wedding. So you know if he go be early, you know if he go be five minutes late, you ain't gonna know if he might be two hours late. It's so interesting because it seems as though nowadays the, it's the bride who does do that. And not the bridegroom, not so? You was early? Papa. I went to a wedding, of course, in which the bride, the bride came three hours late. We were waiting outside, and she passed by. She now come from the hairdresser. And that was an hour after we were supposed to start. And she was healing out everybody still. That wasn't the case in the Jews. So that the bridegroom used to do that same sort of thing. So he wasn't sure when he was coming. But it is interesting then in the, the, our gospel, something happens. A nameless person, a voice was heard. And this voice said, go out and meet him. Vocare. That voice was inviting the bridesmaids to move from where they were to where the bridegroom is. That voice was moving from where you were to another location and inviting you to follow. Inviting you, more importantly, to meet or to encounter the bridegroom. That's a vocation. That is your vocari. That is exactly what we speak about and celebrate this Sunday. Go out and encounter him. So when we then speak about vocations, of course, there are, generally speaking, three sets of vocation. One vocation would be to the single life, where you aren't married and you aren't a priest. And in fact, just recently we, in, we spoke with a nun, 
and her particular vocation was amazing. She was the, is rather the seventh of seven children. Her parents had no idea, no intention of having a seventh child. You think six is enough? And yet, here comes this daughter, this gift of theirs. And she says to us, you know, she wanted to be a nun, she believed from the moment she was born. She had no other vocation or view in her life ever than to become a nun. She was confident that the vocation, that the vocari that she received was in her mother's womb. There was nothing that ever caused her to deviate from that. That's one vocation. Another vocation, of course, was another friend of ours. He's a priest. He's French. And when his mother was having him, she went to the parish church. And she knelt before God in the sanctuary. And she looked towards heaven and she said this. And she said, if this is a boy, this one is yours. This man entered the seminary at age 12. And he became a priest. He told me once, you know, he left France and was missioning all over. He missed his family dearly because for the last 45 years, he hasn't been home. And when he calls his mother and she says, and he says to her mom, you know, you getting old and I'm catching my skin here, what's going on? One of the things that he, she tells him is this. Do you find joy where you are? Do you find joy where you are? And he says, yes. Then she says, follow your vocation. Then, of course, there's the other vocation. The vocation to married life. And yes, Married life is a vocation. And my wife and I, if you don't know by now, we're involved with Worldwide Marriage Encounter. And in Worldwide Marriage Encounter, there's a competition that we run every year. Every year in North America, we look for the oldest married couple. So this year, we ran the competition and we found a winning couple. And every time I say this, I like to then poll the, those who listen just how old you think they were married, or how long you think they were married. So I start with 50 years. You think it's 50 years? More than that. 55 years? More than that. 60 years? More than that. 65 years? More than that. 70 years? More than that. 75? More than that. 80? More than that. 81? 82? 83? 84? They were married and are married 85 years. You think you can manage that? They have been married 85 years. They live at home with their 76 year old son and a 55 year old grandson. They are 105. 
what's interesting is this. I said that once somewhere else. And someone afterwards came to me and said, but you know, married 85 years, that's good. But are they happy? It's more important in his mind that as a married person, that you're happy. And I said, no. The aim in life is not to be happy in your marriage. So all those who, who married now and you're not happy, you're doing a good job. <laughs> the aim in life is not to be happy in your marriage. The aim in life, like the priest, is to find joy. Joy is, goes far deeper than happiness. When you find your vocation, you find joy. These bridesmaids, these five wise bridesmaids, when they went into the wedding hall, after following their vocation, after going out and meeting the bridegroom, they found joy in the wedding hall. That is what brings your joy following your vocation. Going out from where you are, following the voice of God, and ending up where you ought to be. Now I've seen some gray hair here. And I suspect then that somebody in the back of their minds saying, where am I going to find a vocation at my age? I done make up my mind already. But the amazing thing about it is simply this. There are vocations within your vocation. Every stage and age in your life, you are invited continuously to follow this voice, which continuously calls to you and to me, moving you from where you are to where you ought to be. If you read the Catholic news this week, for instance, Father Paul Bosiniak was married for over 40 years. He entered the seminary, then met his wife, left the seminary, got married, had three children, became a permanent deacon with me. His dear wife passed away, and then that vocation started once again. I went to Barbados at an ordination. And the priest who was ordained had a wife and children because he was an Anglican priest. Found a vocation in the Catholic Church. Left the priesthood in the Anglican communion. Entered the seminary and then was ordained a Catholic priest. There are vocations within your vocation. When I was young, some people might say I'm still young. So let me suppose that I'm old. So when I was young, I remember distinctly growing up in Sawa, serving as an altar boy. And everybody say, boy, he is a priest, 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 priest. That wasn't me. I went on and studied my study professional doing my stuff, met my wife, we start a family. Probably about 14 years ago, Archbishop Gilbert went on EWTN or Trinity TV and he invited people to do something. I remember that day distinctly because I just happened to be watching TV on a Thursday. 
happened to be looking at that station when he came out live and said he is asking people to consider a vocation within your vocation. He issued a letter for solidarity, inviting people to listen to your vocation within your vocation. That started a chain of events within me, which has brought me here today still working through being a, a man, a husband, a father, a professional, and a deacon. Still working through and listening to that vocation that God has continuously called me to. What is God calling you to? What is that vocation that is still being crystallized within you? How are you responding to that call to take you from where you are to where you ought to be? Every day, every hour, every moment, God is calling. In every age and stage of your own life, But there's something else then. There's a little key word, a little key phrase in this gospel which just gives us another head start. When we try to figure out just what God is calling us to. And that key phrase is all about the flasks of oil. When you bring your flasks of oil into your waiting period, as God calls you, you depend on those flasks of oil. And what is that? That is prayer. It is through prayer, it is through that relationship, it is through your being in the presence of God that these vocations within your vocation become increasingly clear. That is what you bring to the table when you are prepared then to respond to your vocation. When you are ready as those wise bridesmaids were to God and His call it is through your prayer life that makes you ready enough to say yes. I remember, for instance, Archbishop Harris used to tell us a lot. He would have epic arguments with God as a teenager when he was hearing a call that resounded and reverberated in his heart. He would go to the cathedral and argue with God. Why? Because he had a girlfriend. He had his life planned. And God was calling him to something else. And it is in that time of prayer that you invite God to give you the grace to make the decision that he's asking you to embark on. Because many people spend a lifetime fighting God. And if you want to enjoy the joy of being with him in the wedding hall, so to speak, you need to pray for the grace for him to crystallize it in your heart and for, to give you the strength to respond to his call. To give you the strength to give you those flasks of oil so that you respond to his vocation. That's your homework. 
That's the challenge. That is what we are being invited to do. This week, spend some time in prayer. Asking God to crystallize within your hearts your vocation within your vocation. To crystallize within your hearts that which He is calling you from and that which He is calling you to. And to give you the wherewithal, the grace, so that you can respond to that call. When you are in your private place, when you are in your prayer time, I invite you to say nothing. Allow God to speak and allow your own heart to listen. Amen. So I invite you now to please stand. And this being the month of November, a month which is dedicated in a special way to those who have died marked with a sign of faith, we have left here, for instance, a basket inviting you to place the names of your relatives into that basket so that we as a community can pray for the repose of their souls. We as a community can ask God to have mercy on them and to welcome them into heaven. So I invite you then to just quiet yourselves, bow your heads, and bring those members of your family to mind, asking God to have mercy. Almighty God and Father, by the mystery of the cross, you have made us strong. By the sacraments of the resurrection, you have sealed us as your own. Look kindly upon your servants, now freed from the bonds of mortality, and count them among your saints in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as a community as well, working on our vocation, working on our vocation within our vocation, allowing ourselves to listen to the voice of God, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became her. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come before the Father with humble and contrite hearts, asking Him to listen to our prayers. We know neither the day nor the hour. God will challenge us to stay awake, strengthen my teaching, return with confidence to our God for what we need. For the gift of wisdom. God's wisdom is God's plan for all people, a gift of life that never grows dim. May we always look for the wisdom of God so that we know what is lasting value in life and lead lives that accord with God's will. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For trust in God's goodness. We commend to our God for those who have fallen asleep in the Lord. We confess our faith in God's power to save. We confident that God will care for us in life and in death. Lord, hear us. Lord graciously hear us. For the grace to be ready when he, Lord the Lord comes. When the Lord visits, may we be ready to respond in love. May we care with love for those in need, recognizing the Lord's presence and those who are suffering in our world. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us for a serious desires to follow Christ. Like the wise woman in the gospel story, may we be ready to greet the Lord at all times. May we be taken seriously the teaching of Christ by lives that proclaim God's value and actions that witness to this way. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We also lift up again our, the prayers for all those who have gone before us, all of our family and friends and persons who we will have met, members of our family whom we don't even know. We pray in a special way that God may have mercy on their souls. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious. We also pray for those discerning a vocation to the priesthood and religious life. We ask that through prayer you may give them your grace that they may soon understand what your call entails and give the, you them the grace to follow it. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And in the silence of our own hearts, we lift up our intentions to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So we gather all our prayers, those said it aloud as well as in the depths of our hearts, and we present them to our Blessed Mother as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Collection him, mold us, Lord. Number two five seven. Your signals. Oh, that's all. 
the potter's clay. Fire us, Lord, with thy spirit today. Shape us now in the likeness of Jesus, your Son, so we in fact may continue. Only we shepherd has begun. Set us apart as your priesthood and raise us again in your mind. Call us anew out of darkness to walk in your light. Mold us, Lord, as the Father's play. Fire us, Lord, with thy spirit today. Shape us now in the likeness of Jesus, your Son, so we in fact may continue what the great shepherd has begun. Wake us each morning to listen to you as we stand in the bridge. When we reply to the well, divide us with peace. Hold us, Lord, as the potter's clay. Fire us, Lord, with thy spirit today. Shape us now in the likeness of Jesus, your Son, so we his luck may continue what the great shepherd has begun. With bold eyes all the want to come Hold us, Lord, as the bodies clean Fire us, Lord, with thy spirit today Shape us now in the likeness of Jesus, your Son, so we his work may continue what the great shepherd has begun. Fill us in you as we store us, release us all over the land. With boldness and power, yet those silence clay in your hand. Mold us, Lord, as the potter's play, fire us, Lord, with your spirit today. Shape us now in the likeness of Jesus, your Son, so we in fact may continue what the great shepherd has begun. So we in fact may continue. What the great shepherd has begun. So I invite you now to please kneel as we retrieve Jesus from the tabernacle. My sisters and brothers, we are beginning our communion rite, and in this way we unite ourselves with our other brothers and sisters who are celebrating Mass at this time. 
and at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, O Father, Our Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And you are the branches 
As we mentioned last week, we will be streaming all of our services and masses via Facebook Live. And uh, therefore, we understand uh, the restrictions in terms of numbers who can attend with us. So as such, there are many of us who would have loved to have been here but can't make it. And in remembrance of them, we see an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. more than any other so much more 
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and, brothers and sisters, uh, good morning. First of all, again, we thank uh, Deacon Job, our new parish administrator, for celebrating the service with us. Um, as you see, there's a second collection being taken up. That's for the, uh, the care committee. Um, as usual, the first weekend of every month, we take up a, a second collection. Uh, greetings now. Do we have anyone who's celebrating a birthday with us? We just would like to celebrate with you. So no birthdays. How about anniversaries? Do we have any wedding anniversaries today or this week? Going once, going twice. <laughs> so we just uh, extend our hands as we sing anointing for all of them. How many years? Almighty and eternal God, you have so exalted the unbreakable bond of marriage that it has become the sacramental sign of your son's union with the church as his spouse. Look with favor on our brother and sister whom you have united in marriage as they look for and ask for your help and the protection of the Virgin Mary. 
They pray that in good times and in bad, they will grow in love for each other, that they will resolve to be of one heart in the bond of peace. Lord, in their struggles, let them rejoice that you are near to help them. In their needs, let them know that you are there to rescue them. In their joys, let them see that you are the source and completion of every happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So join me in, in, in congratulating them as they celebrate 48 years of marriage. Let the power of the Holy Spirit fall on them. I always have this as a test, you know, whenever, when you get married, early in your marriage, you just kiss one another this way. And as you get older, you just kiss that way. <laughs> so you're not married a long time, right? <laughs> one of the things, as you probably would know with my style, is that I have a little titbit. So my titbit for this week is... How many weeks do we have in our ordinary time? I would have said at least twice that we're celebrating this 32nd Sunday of ordinary time. So how many weeks will this go up to? How much? That's all I heard. Well, I think I heard it correctly and we go up to 34. So that in other words, we have two more weeks to go. So next week will be 33, and the week after that will be the Solemnity of Christ the King. And what happens essentially in our readings is that effectively what we're doing is that we're going up to a crescendo. And the crescendo, for those musically inclined, is that part of, the, of our celebration which really ends with us celebrating Christ the king of the universe. Okay? So that you would then start to see a different tone in our readings as they become and speak to and turn to the end times and the final judgment, etc. And after that, we move into the first Sunday of Advent and we change into a new liturgical year. So this year was year A, where we study the Gospel of Matthew. When we get into year B, we'll be studying the Gospel of Mark. Then we get into year C, we'll be studying the Gospel of Luke. And then we do that in a three-year cycle. So we have 34 years, 34 years, Lord, 34 weeks in the liturgical calendar. And we're coming up shortly to when we end with the crescendo of our liturgical year, the Solemnity of Christ the King. Amen? Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying your life, your, the Lord, where your lives. Thanks be to God. All recessional hymn, till all my people are one. Number 295 in your hymnals. Till all my people are one. Stand together for what you believe, work for what must be done. Love each other in all that you do, till Lord my people are one. Spread the peace, my brothers, spread it everywhere. The song of freedom, make every sound be heard. 
Keep the crying team to me. Tell her every word. Stand together for what you believe. Work for what must be done.